This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. A recent survey tells us that one in four Americans say they're online constantly. And if you're watching us now on a smartphone, you might be one of those statistics. Well, today, many say what I choose to do in my own home is no one's business. But my next guest might disagree with that. Jonathan Burke is a pastor and adjunct professor at Bluffton University. Glad to have you with us. Thanks, Paul. Glad to be L here. Let's just clear it real quick. It, are, are people going to go to hell because they're watching Netflix and too much YouTube and they're, they're not paying attention to anything else? It's a good question. And honestly, it really depends on what your definition of hell is. Yeah. I mean, for Jesus said, I've come to proclaim the breaking in of the kingdom of God. And he says, you know, I'm not the God of the dead, but of the living. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think that, I think that, for those of us who spend a, a lot of our time on our smartphones, on social media, or Netflix binging, or whatever it may be, engaged in media, I think we ought to be asking the question, how is this shaping me? And is the kingdom of God breaking in because of my life? Or have these things become a distraction become or a, a substitute? Yeah. Or yeah, a wall of participating in heavenly fellowship, being a part of the work of the church of the kingdom of God here and now. So in and of itself, you, you're watching this, it's, it's not, like you say, it's, it's going to shape you, but at the same time, the church used to, people used to believe that the church would say that those things in themselves are sin. Going to a movie, having a TV, going dancing, mixed bathing in a, in a yeah, right, municipal right, pool, right, things right, like that. Right, right. Those used to be things right. that, pe that some people in the church would say, those are, those are sin, you can't do those things. Well, I think that the teaching of the church, drawing hard lines, saying things are sin, whether they're sin or not, mm -hmm. a version of legalism, the intent of drawing those lines is really to shape people. So, yeah, maybe watching, watching a movie, I wouldn't say is a sin, but the movies that you do watch, what's the content yeah. of them, and how is that shaping you? My wife and I were watching a film uh, the other day that I didn't think had any sexually explicit content in it, and I don't watch a ton of movies. Mm -hmm. Movies aren't necessarily my thing, but we're watching this film, and this scene comes in and I fast forward it and I move on to the, the next scene. But I realized for my mind who doesn't take a lot of time taking in that kind of content, yeah. over the next couple of days, I would it think about back. that scene or it would, it would come back. And really for those of us who are spending a lot of our time watching explicit material, mm -hmm. we need to realize that those, those images, those scenes are shaping our imagination. And I think I'm more concerned with what's the imagination of the people of God today and how is it shaped? But people say, well, I'm mature enough. I can watch a movie, an occasional movie or something like that, or something on YouTube that might have some violent content or some sexually explicit content. I'm mature enough to, to get through all well, that. Yeah, I'm not going to carry it with me. Well, that's a, comp that's a ridiculous thought. It's as if, as if maturity is some sort of immunity. And it's mm -hmm. not. It's yeah. not. We're human. Mature mm -hmm. people are mature enough to say no. Mature people have self-control. It's immature people that don't realize their own humanity, that think they're above some sort of indulgence and that that's not going to shape them. Maturity is really, um, it's evidenced by one's ability to say no to particular things and to have self-control. Right. You know, we've been talking a lot about media as a consumption that we're taking in, but at the same time, in today's society, we're putting out a lot of media individually. That can be just as devastating. I don't think many of us think of ourselves as media producers. <laughs> no. But the fact of the matter is, 20, 30 years ago, the only people with video cameras and the only thing publishing content to put online mm -hmm. or streaming things uh, for TV for people to consume were professionals, right. people who were qualified to do so, people with communications degrees, people who knew how to speak politically correct. Who had censors behind them. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Today, that's not the case. We are all media producers and for for whatever reason with that freedom with that power that we have we have not taken the care to think critically about how we can damage our own image and also damage the feelings and the beliefs of other people through our just liberal production of our own thoughts via our Facebook page, our Twitter, mm. or videos that we post online. Yeah, people are creating this stuff at the same time. They're being, they're being colored. What they create is being colored by what they're watching on media. And they think, well, it must be okay. I can go ahead and create this. I can go ahead and say this. Something very nasty or evil about somebody I don't care about or I don't like their politics. Sure. Uh, it, it becomes a thing where it, be, it, it, it starts to color who we become even in the media. Absolutely. And we also 
re develop a different perception of ourselves, yeah. a lot of us wouldn't say the things person to person that we would post online. And in that Isn't way, that we, become, we become very unhealthy as <laughs> yeah. a society. There's a cyber reality that is not personal reality. Right. And you can hide behind that. Yeah, I, can be, I can be somebody else. I can be my alter ego if I want to be. Right. And Christian fellowship is grounded in person to person, not in some sort of smoke screen that we have when right. we engage with people online. So what's led to the, I mean, the f fact that some people are even addicted to their cell phones. They can't get off of their cell phones. They can't get away from, from media in some way. They've become addicted to that. What, what is, it? Is, is, is the addictive part of that? Is that, is that sin? Is that, I mean, it's drawing them into that they can't stay away from their, their I cell think, phone. I think culturally we have accepted th some things as normal, mm -hmm. which maybe are not helpful to us. And again, I'm not a professional psychologist. There are some psychologists out there that would have great things to say about our collective psyche. But as a theologian and as a pastor, what I would say is our priorities have shifted where maybe in the church years ago, the theological priorities that led people to create particular legalisms or particular mm -hmm. rules, they aren't there anymore because as a society, we have these myths. We think to ourselves, right. oh, I'm more mature than people that came before me. Oh, I can handle these things. Or we, are, we think of ourselves as maybe a more enlightened version of Christianity that don't need to have boundaries or parameters, which Jesus, Jesus came and said, you know, you've heard the law says this. Well, I've come to take it further, right. not to make it less. And I think we have this misconception that Christianity is in some way a lessening of laws or guidelines when really Christianity following Jesus is a whole, holistic, whole life, whole mind, whole heart engagement and dedication to the ways of Jesus. Well, how, do, how do we know we're, we're indulging too much? I mean, how do you judge the, the fact that I mean, so many people are on media constantly? And as media has, has kind of just enveloped our society, uh, the content on there has also gotten more and more you know, violent, more risque, more explicit. Sure. And so you watch a little bit of it and you're going to see more of it than what you saw 10 years ago. I think that a good measure for people is really to ask themselves honestly and critically, what are my appetites and what are the things that, are, that I'm thinking about most? Mm -hmm. Because really those are two those are two pretty good gauges on the things yeah, that are What's your my mind tied up in most of the time? Right, right? Those, those are good gauges for, what's, what, for things that have become our priorities. And I think that for those of us who would follow Jesus, I think that we need to be asking ourselves critically, critically the question consistently, what is my mind thinking mm -hmm. about consistently? Paul teaches whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, mm -hmm. whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, right. if anything's excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things, mm -hmm. think about such things. Are we filling our minds with things that fulfill those requirements. How do, how do we relate to someone who we know has crossed that line? I mean, it may be a friend, it may be a, a family member. We say, you know, they're, they're just overboard. I mean, people used to get tied up in, in the old days in soap operas, and it was hard to get free from that, or romance novels, or pornography, or something. When, when you know that a, a friend or someone that you love is, is tied into that, how do you break through that wall to where they, I mean, they think they're mature enough to handle it. I, think, you, I think Jesus gives us a pretty, good directive of discipleship that I don't know many of us take seriously, just in the simple invitation that he makes to the fishermen. Hey, yeah. Peter, John, Andrew, come follow me. Come walk with me. So many people spend their time in isolation or in addiction simply because they are isolated. They don't mm -hmm. have anyone to be with. And I think that our call in a modern age is really to simplify to just go spend time with people, to be with people. Right. If you have someone that you're really concerned about, mm -hmm. don't just talk about being concerned with them. Invite them over. Invite them to a meal. Spend an mm -hmm. evening with them. I think that could do much more than trying to convince them that they're wrong or they're right. lost in sin. But is the church equipped uh, to, to deal with this? And I mean, the church, the media is big in the church. Uh, the church is in media, and uh, are they equipped to deal with, with people that, that do have the problem, have an addiction problem with it? There's a really good book out there that was done by a couple of theologians called Sticky Faith, trying to figure out what churches were effective in 
helping young people maintain their faith. And one of the things that they found is the churches that were best equipped to help young people maintain their faith were churches that had older people that were invested personally in the lives of those young people. Yeah. So to answer your question, there are churches mm -hmm. that are equipped to help people move away from media addiction, mm -hmm. but they're not doing anything innovative necessarily. They're just spending time spending. with young people. They're investing they're in relating. young people. It's the relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. You're, a, you're a pastor, but you're, and you've got a, a whole church in front of you, but you also are you're a family man. You've got daughters. How do you instruct them? I mean, they go to school and, and they see everybody's got an iPad today or an iPhone or an iPod or something. And, and they're on. How do you instruct your family? So it is really easy to be overwhelmed by the big problem of culture. Mm -hmm. But the only way that I'm going to change culture is by changing or influencing one person at a time. So with my daughters, with my own family, mm -hmm. I carve out focused time to just be with them. Focused time that we don't have screens mm -hmm. in front of us, but that we just engage in conversation, that we play together, that we laugh together. And furthermore, for people who are in the church, I, the greatest help that I think I can be to them in giving them sort of a counter narrative or helping them maybe correct a unhealthy lifestyle of over inundation with media is to find a place, a community for them to be plugged mm -hmm. into, to be a part of. Really the only way we're gonna turn this cultural movement of uh, media excess is by personal relationships, by engaging with people one-on-one. -on -one. If you'd like more information about Jesus Christ or how to connect to a local church, go to our website or Facebook page. We have a lot more resources there that we can connect you with. Plus, I'd like to hear from you.